Okay, today we're going to look at making more use of TrueNAS than you typically would. And that's by using virtual machines in TrueNAS scale. So we can install a virtual machine like a Linux Ubuntu and get it to do things that your TrueNAS can't by default. So let's take a look and get started on that. So we'll get logged into our TrueNAS here. And we can see here that we have increased the resources for this TrueNAS for this project. We want to have sufficient memory and sufficient CPU power to power a small virtual machine. Uh, Linux can be pretty light, especially if you're not doing an image with a desktop on it and it's just a bash prompt or a command prompt server style Linux you can get away with much less memory and much less CPU power. But for this demo, we're going to use a desktop version of Ubuntu. So the first thing that we want to do is get our storage set up. So we'll go over to storage. So you'll see we don't have any storage pools available. So we'll go ahead and create one. We'll give it a name. This one's going to be virtual. We'll select the single disk that we have, which is 40 gigs, which is fine for this case. This is just for demo purposes. Uh, typically you'd have, you know, a RAID Z1 or a RAID Z2 or something like that. We'll force it. And we'll create. Okay, now that our storage pool has been created, we'll go ahead and create a couple of data sets on here. Uh, in my case, I'm going to create two data sets and we will see why that is in a second. So we'll select add data set. This one's going to be called virtual machines. And we're pretty much going to leave it as default. So once we've created this data set we'll select the above storage pool and we'll create a new data set this one will be called isos and we'll leave it mostly default so just for performance reasons the isos data set we want to have compression off so if we left it on like we did we can go to edit turn off compression uh, this will save us some CPU cycles when uploading and using the ISOs that we're going to upload. So for that reason, let's keep compression off for the ISOs directory. So we'll also change the compression for the virtual machines data set. If you left it on inherit LZ4, we don't need compression really. It's going to hinder the performance of the virtual machine booting and copying and installing and all that kind of stuff so let's leave it off we don't need to spend cpu cycles uh, doing compression on these so we'll go edit and we'll just set compression level to off and we can put sync to always this way the sync will use a little bit more but we kind of need it with the virtual machines we want the data in the virtual machines to be written right away. So those are the two changes that we'll make to there that we didn't change when we originally set these up. So go ahead and click on save on that. And now we'll go to set up our virtual machines. So go ahead and click on virtualization. And we don't have any virtual machines here. So we can go add virtual machines. And we'll go through the tile here on the right hand side and we'll select the information that we need. So we're going to go with Linux and we're going to install Ubuntu. So we'll name it Ubuntu. 
the boot method, uh, you can leave it as either or. Um, I like to go with legacy BIOS. We'll give it a shot on a UEFI. Uh, I typically haven't had a whole bunch of luck with UEFI, but we'll give it a shot and see how it works. Start on boot up. I don't want it to start on boot up every time. This is just a demo and a temporary VM that we might want to do some extra stuff in that TrueNAS can't do natively. So we'll uncheck start on boot up. We'll go next and we'll customize here. So I've had some trouble with the virtual CPUs. If you assign too many of them, TrueNAS kind of gets a little wonky with it. So I try and do not too many. I like to go with just two cores. We can change this later on once the virtual machine is installed and stable and updated. But just for the install, I'm gonna go with two. I'll change the amount of memory to eight gigabytes. All these other options we can leave. If you're getting more advanced and you have a high CPU count or high thread count CPU, a server CPU or something like that, uh, you might want to assign specific CPU cores to certain virtual machines so that they stay on the actual same CPU. You have uh, dual or quad CPU machines. So the disk image, we'll leave it on AHCI. The location, we're gonna store this virtual machine in virtual machines and we'll make it a 20 gig VM. For the NIC, we'll select Intel. It's pretty compatible and it has a lot of drivers for a lot of different Linuxes and Windows and stuff like that. So we'll leave it on that one and we'll attach it to the only NIC that's in this machine. And the installation media. So this is important. So what we're going to do is we are going to upload an image file and we're going to upload the Ubuntu image that we downloaded earlier. If you haven't downloaded it yet, just head over to the Ubuntu website and download the Ubuntu desktop. So we are going to store it in ISOs. There's nothing in there right now. So we'll choose a file. We'll select our Ubuntu 2104 desktop that we downloaded last two years ago. Jeez. The one I got right now, which is fine. And then we'll click upload. It'll take a few minutes to upload this and then we'll be able to use it. Okay, pretty straightforward. We uploaded the file. Let's go next. What we can see here that it should automatically choose the installation media that you just uploaded in that ISO. For GPU, I just leave it on default. It'll automatically just choose whatever GPU is available. If you have a specific one that you want to use, you can go ahead and select on the drop down list. Then uh, confirmation of options. Click save and that will set up and deploy your VM. It will not turn it on because we didn't select auto start. So we do have to come and select start. When we select start, we're going to get extra options here. One of them is going to be a display. We'll select that so that we go can go in and go through with the installation of Ubuntu. So go ahead and click on start. And we get a bunch of new options here. We'll select display, which will open a new tab. Oh, just refresh, we opened it too early. So go ahead and select Ubuntu and we'll let this run. This might take a few minutes it is a little bit slow on the TrueNAS here to get this running, but it will eventually come. And we can see here on the dashboard that TrueNAS is working away on it. It's using up some memory, using up some CPU there. Be patient with it. Give it a few minutes to load up the ISO and read the information off of it and get the virtual machine running in boot it into its startup initiation for Ubuntu installation. And you might notice that this screen may disconnect. Usually this is something's happening. So the screen changed, it got disconnected for a split second. 
through the Ubuntu installer and it disconnected the screen. Just go ahead and click reconnect or connect and you should be back on your screen. I believe there is a screen timeout on some of these. So if you don't do anything within the screen for five or 10 minutes, it might also disconnect. Just go ahead and click on connect again and it should bring you back to right where you need to be. So here we go. It's starting to load into Ubuntu. Um, we should get the pop-up for either running Ubuntu or installing Ubuntu. So we'll give it a few more minutes for that to pop up. Okay, so after a little while, our install Ubuntu popped up. Let's go ahead and just go with a default install of the OS. We're not gonna download updates. It's gonna take a lot of extra time. We can download the updates once we've installed and everything is running and stable. We're gonna keep it very basic and simple. <clears throat> Now it's just copying files. Typical Ubuntu install, we'll wait for that to finish and we'll get to the next section. And this shouldn't take too long, but considering we didn't have any compression and the CPU cycle shouldn't be too high. We can see here that the CPU usage isn't pegging at 100%. So. Okay, after a extra long install time, click on restart. Okay, so we want to remove the installation media so we can go over to virtualization. So before we can remove the CD-ROM, we'll need to power off the machine. So just go ahead and select power off. We'll select devices select the CD-ROM and we'll select delete. Now that CD-ROM is deleted, we can go back here and we can power this VM back on. And we can click on connect here. And it will boot up our Ubuntu. Okay, so we're finally booted into our Ubuntu. We'll complete the setup with the setup questions. And there we are. So we can go to our network settings and we can see what IP address we got from our network. And we should be able to use VNC to connect to this. Let's try and take a look. Very possible that the VNC is not connected directly through the Ubuntu OS. So let's figure out where we can connect with VNC. So if we take a look at the IP address and the port, we can see that the port for display is port 5900. So if we just put in our IP address of the true NAS and port 5900, we should be able to connect to our VNC. So let's open up Ultra VNC Viewer and we put in the IP address of the true NAS okay, and the port 5900 and hit connect. And that will give us a direct connection to the Ubuntu VM. So once we're connected, we can see that the VNC does work by VNCing to the TrueNAS and the 
port for the display on the virtual machine. So now we can use this Linux Ubuntu virtual machine just like we would our regular one and it's running on your TrueNAS. So you could get some extra abilities and services and applications installed on there and connect to it remotely and get some other things done with your TrueNAS. If you've got the resources for it, you can make use of them. It doesn't need to be just a storage server. It can also run virtual machines. So I hope this has helped you out in getting a virtual machine running on your TrueNAS. I will see you in the next one. Bye.